better lies below. Hello, Johnny from Eurogamer here, and this is Apex Legends. If you had an eye on the channel last week, you will have seen a video called 20 Apex Legends Tips to Help You Become Champion of the Arena. To our surprise and delight, the comments section turned into a veritable treasure trove of extra tips for Apex players wanting to up their game, and some of them were so useful we decided to give them their proper due and make this 13 Apex Legends Tips According to You. Thanks to R. Kitson, Jake and Lynam, probably not, and um, I'm taking you to Flavor Town for these tips. Our first piece of advice may seem obvious, given it's about pointing your gun in the right direction, but stick with me on this. When you're not looting, it's a good idea to keep your crosshair at roughly chest height. The simple logic being it's both easier and faster to aim at an enemy when you don't have to swing your crosshair up from the floor, or indeed pull it down from the ceiling, in order to fire accurately. The centre mass is a good place to aim for as a rule, as a headshot alone generally isn't enough to down another player, so better to aim for a more sure target than risk missing when you go for the head. Remember to adjust for inclines and you should be able to consistently up your damage output without putting in much effort. Of course, bullet drop is a factor in Apex Legends and ought to be taken into consideration if you're engaging at range, which personally I never bother with because I'm a bad shot. Anyway, if you are engaged in a bit of a sniper fight, make sure to have a quick peek first in order to work out your range. In other words, don't poke your head out from cover and start shooting until you know you're at least in with a chance at hitting something. If you're within 100 meters of your target, the central dot should do you fine. On a sniper scope, the dot mark 2 is good for about 200 meters, and so on and so forth. It can be a tricky thing to master, but learning to accurately gauge your distances and aim accordingly is a really useful skill to have, and will serve you well should you get drawn into a fight at long range. While range is an important consideration in Apex Legends, so is elevation. In any shooter, having the high ground offers a serious tactical advantage, and this is especially true here. If you're having to fire up at your opponent, you're less likely to hit them, so you can make it harder for your enemies by trying to engage from an elevated position whenever possible. This is why you'll often see other players scrambling for the rafters at the first sign of engagement. If you get lucky, it'll also give you a chance to ambush other players entirely, which is a real bonus. Apex Legends, of course, is a game with a lot of verticality to it, so make sure you're using it to your advantage. Making sure you're in a good position to be firing is less than half the battle, of course, because you've actually got to hit your target if you want to have any hopes of bringing them down. And that's why trigger discipline is our next tip. It may seem obvious, but it's often tempting to just hold down the fire button when engaging an enemy, even if you know you aren't aiming specifically at them at that moment. Easy as this spray and pray attitude is to adopt, it's also a very good way to run out of ammunition and leave yourself vulnerable. In short, if your enemy is more economical with their ammunition, and they can aim worth the damn, you're going to run out of ammo first, and probably lose the fight. This is especially true in Ape Legs, when the amount of damage you have to pour into an enemy, otherwise known as time to kill, is often pretty significant. If you haven't already learned trigger management from other shooters, try and get into the habit of firing in short bursts. It's easier to fine-tune your aim when the gun isn't kicking like a mule, and you'll save ammo at the same time. It may seem counterintuitive to lower your rate of fire in a fight, but it honestly will make a difference. While we're talking of the heat of battle, actually, the next tip our commenters gave us is to simply take your time, even in a gunfight. Especially in a game like this where you have a lot of armour, the simple truth is that you often have more time to react than you think. I know from quite considerable personal experience that it's very easy to panic in a fight, but more often than not, you really do have enough time to pause briefly, realign your sights, and then start firing again. Like with trigger management, not firing may seem counterintuitive when someone is trying to kill you, but it's better to wait a moment and re-engage with greater accuracy than it is to flail around and hope you get lucky. 
As you can almost certainly tell from my gameplay capture, this is a lesson I have yet to really take on board, so thank goodness these are commenters' tips and not mine. Do as I say, not as I do, in other words. Next up, let's talk flanking. Flanking is a great tactic. Surprising your enemy from an interesting new angle is a great way to get ahead in any shooter, after all. That said, flanking can take a while, so the most important thing to bear in mind while going on manoeuvres is to be quick. If your team is running around the side of a building and you decide to cover the other side, that's great, but if it takes you a long time, then you may be putting your teammates at a disadvantage. A cunning flank is no good, in other words, if the rest of your squad is already getting chewed up in a two-on-three fight. If possible, it's better to take a more direct route onto the roof of a building or onto higher ground in general. This still gives you the benefit of forcing your enemy to engage on two fronts, while hopefully reducing the likelihood of any of your own squad getting caught out. Of course, if you're also using voice chat with your team, you can coordinate your movements further so that everyone engages with the enemy team at the same time. Either way, long flanks bad, short, well-timed flanks very good. No, not like this. For all of these useful tips, mind you, let's face it, you are going to get downed at some point while playing Apex Legends. Just because you're slowly bleeding out, however, doesn't necessarily mean the fight is over. If you're downed inside a building, you can actually block doorways even while downed, forcing the enemy to finish you off if they want to get out of the room and chase your other teammates. It's likely a death sentence for you, of course, but splitting up the enemy team is a great way to help keep your squad mates in a more manageable firefight, or even give them time to coordinate an attack on the player you're blocking. Basically, any way you can inconvenience the other players, even while downed, increases your chances of surviving as a team, so while you may end up dead and in need of a banner recovery, that's still better than your entire squad getting wiped out. So. Pop your knockout shield, channel your inner cat, and get right under somebody's feet. While we're on the subject of blocking doorways, we should really talk about chemical nasty man, Caustic. Caustic is able to lay inflatable traps full of deadly gas, and these, much like a downed player, do a beautiful job of blocking doorways. Indeed, if you've spent much time in the game's bunker recently, you'll almost certainly have seen an enemy team trying to block up the exits to a room in order to set up a trap for any team foolish enough to come looking for them. Doors can be broken down with a few melee attacks, of course, but if you're playing as Caustic, using your traps to slow your enemies down or funnel them into a waiting ambush is a great way to control an engagement. Once you've earned enough in-game currency to unlock him, that is. Talking of the unlockable legends, our next tip concerns Bearded Bamboozler Mirage. His ult can be really useful if you're trying to avoid enemy fire and get to a better position, but it's not foolproof. The real Mirage has a predator-like shimmering outline when his ultimate ability is active, and it's not that hard to spot if players are looking for it especially if the real deal continues going in the same direction they were heading when the ability itself was activated. Instead, you should aim to change direction as soon as you've activated the ability, making your movement harder to predict and hopefully keeping you safe until you've reached a better location. You can also use Mirage's ultimate ability while rushing an enemy to increase your chances of them missing you at close quarters, though you should only really attempt this if you're confident you can get the kill so as to avoid wasting your ultimate unnecessarily. Talking of ultimate abilities, this next tip is for the Wraith mains. Once you've used your ultimate ability and placed a portal, you might find yourself wondering how long you have left before it disappears again. The most straightforward way to find this out is to look at your ultimate recharge counter. Once it reaches 39%, your portal will disappear and you won't be able to use it any longer. A small thing, but useful if you're relying on it tactically, but don't know whether you've still got time for a quick warp. Now, this next commenter tip may sound harsh, but it is fairly good advice, so stick with it and try not to feel too guilty. Simply put, if you're playing with random squad mates and they charge off by themselves and get downed, just leave them. 
You'll get more XP by surviving right until the end of the game than you will by reviving those teammates who tried to be a lone wolf and got downed as a result. And you never know, maybe it'll teach those players that running off is an intensely bad idea. Just a thought. Just two bits of advice left now, and they're both pretty quick ones, so I'll rattle through those and then say my goodbyes. Firstly, if you're playing as Pathfinder and use your ultimate ability to place a zipline, you might want to consider placing the far end in a doorway. The zipline can actually be destroyed by closing the door, which is really useful if you want to distance yourself from your enemies and don't want to risk them following you on the zipline you just placed. And very finally, if you're playing as Lifeline, be aware that your enemies can also use your healing drone, so watch where you place it, and that about does it. Hopefully you enjoyed these tips from our commenters, and thanks once again to everybody who contributed. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did, there are loads more for you to watch, some of them should be on screen now, so do give one of those a click. Do like, subscribe and ring that bell icon so you don't miss anything else from Eurogamer, but most importantly, thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.